Hi, my name is Scott Watson, and I'm the author of a new textbook published by Oxford University Press called Using Technology to Unlock Musical Creativity. And we're here at uh, Mountain Lakes High School in Mountain Lakes, New Jersey, and I'm here with my friend and also fellow band director and author, um, or uh, Alfred composer, Chris. Chris, pronounce your last name for me. Bernatas. Bernatas. Okay, so Chris and I um, are going to chat for an hour about the book and try to uh, center on some topics um, Tech, way te ways technology can be integrated um, into the type of music teaching that band directors are most interested in. Uh, before we get too far into the book, uh, I also want to mention uh, some thanks to sponsors who have um, uh, put this webcast up and especially promoted it. Uh, of course, Oxford University Press, Alfred Publishing, Time, which is Technology for Music Education, um, Joe Pisano, um, whose uh, new web app, APS Development, is worth checking out, and uh, noteflight.com. Anyway, um, I want to just introduce Chris. I mentioned that he's a fellow band director and uh, Alfred uh, composer, and uh, we're at his school. Mountain Lakes High School is where Chris uh, teaches, and I asked him to join me today because uh, I figured uh, as a fellow band director, he would have a, a perspective that many of you that are uh, tuning in and he could, um, you know, react the way maybe some of you would react. So with he'll, he'll be interjecting questions and sharing some ways he uses technology as well. So, Chris, thank you for... It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Chris has some experience with webcasting. He and, uh, and some other uh, Alfred composers, Vince Gossi and, uh, was it Todd Stalter? Todd Stalter. Uh, we used the Skype conference, which we'll talk about, I guess, a little bit later on. Yep. But we've involved them as well, yes. So, um, be again, before we get too far into uh, the book, um, what are some Alfred uh, compositions that you've written that are going to be out in the catalog this year that band directors who are watching can look for? Uh, this year I have a, a couple of really nice ones that I'm really proud of. Uh, Hanukkah Festival for higher-level bands for the holiday season, uh, and particularly another one I really would like to mention is Through a Child's Eyes, uh, which is in the Young Symphonic Band series. And I'm mentioning that one because it's dedicated to my daughter, Ashlyn, so I neat, really like neat. that. Um, some of the, the pieces I've written for Alfred that are out this year um, that I hope uh, uh, people who are watching might check out. Uh, at middle school level, uh, Lion of Ireland, it's, a, a, it's based on the tune Brian Burroughs' March. And um, uh, a piece that my wife thought of the title for, Jamaica Me Crazy, <laughs> which is sort of a, uh, an island Caribbean um, uh, piece. So anyway, let's get into uh, the book. I think your wife was saying you make her crazy. Yes, I right. Think she was trying to give you a title. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, you know, we're, we're celebrating 26 uh, years being married this summer, and I'm sure I have made her crazy. <laughs> um, anyway, one thing I want to clarify, too, about um, the book, Using Technology to Unlock Musical Creativity. It's really written for all music teachers, and especially general music teachers and uh, uh, classroom uh, at elementary, middle school, and also high school elective courses like music theory or um, high school music technology, uh, music production, things like that. However, there are some um, significant um, parts of the book that I think uh, band directors would appreciate, and that's what we're going to concentrate on today. So just because we don't talk about some of the things that are in the book, um, I hope those of you who also teach general music uh, or uh, elective music at the high school or middle school, I hope you'll, you'll look at the book um, for some of those topics um, as well. I think we're ready to start into topics that are that are in the book uh, using technology to unlock musical creativity that would be of interest to band directors. And the first one I, I wanted to talk about, Chris, is recording. I know you've done some recording in your rehearsals um, at Parkland High School, where I teach, um, and in the, in the Parkland School District, where I teach. We do a lot of uh, a lot of uses for recording. I'll, I'll name some, and I'd like you to share some of the things sure. you've told me about too. But for instance. Um, I always keep one of these handheld recorders. This is a Yamaha Pocket Track, but I also have a, a Zoom H2, and there's a lot of different handheld um, uh, handheld recorders that that one could purchase. I keep that with me and use it all the time. Uh, when I, for instance, I teach um, several uh, music theory classes, and if I'm going to give a solfege. Uh, test and I notice that a student is absent, I'll just have the, or a dictation test, I'll just record the, uh, the uh, dictation test as I'm giving it in real time and then put the file on the student's computer or put it up on our wiki and, and then when the student comes back they can just you know put the headphones on and listen to it. Um, I record rehearsals for evaluation by myself. Uh, I teach elementary band now in the Parkland School District um, and sometimes just having a student um, at that level hear what they sound like it just does so much more oh, than... Yeah. And you were saying you'd do that with your kids, too. We're, I'm always on the quest for instant feedback. Uh, I've found that when you ask kids what they think about a performance, they, they almost always get the right answer. 
uh, and I'm always we've used the Ederol R1 to record class, but then I have to go back and download it and mix it or put it at you know through the speakers. Uh, so more recently, we've been trying to find record, playback, evaluate, and analyze. Uh, and this snowball microphone that you see here is, is part of that quest. So we've gone through several different variations of recording from the Ederol to direct right into the computer uh, to try to get the feedback and also to now having the snowball to get a decent sound quality so that the kids can actually get an accurate reflection of what their performance is. The other thing that I've done with the recordings is we have an inter-district uh, place where we can post recordings where kids can download them at home. I think kids use them for two different reasons. They download them so they can save them, mm -hmm. you know, so for future to play for their kids when they're older. And also I post them, I post questions with it. Uh, critical thinking type of questions. How can we make this better? Measures one through 17, name three things that we can do from a performance perspective to improve Great. our emotional content. Uh, I think giving kids ownership of their analysis has really involved, uh, has evolved their, their thinking skills. And that's how the technology has helped us in recording. Do you, do you know about the web app SoundCloud? I know it from my son who posts music on okay. SoundCloud, and I'm just learning about it myself right. now, and it seems like uh, an Oh, I noticed with that, um, when I say a web app, it's an online application. You don't have to, you don't have to buy this program. Uh, p people are putting all sorts of applications online that, that you can use as long as you have uh, access to the Internet. And SoundCloud is one of those where um, you can post audio, but you can also put comments in, in the waveform at particular places. So, for instance, the, the, oh, the thing okay. that you just described where at a certain measure, what are some things we could do better? Students um, could, could post their responses right at those places in the playback, um, and they would pop up on the screen as you get to that place. Or you could even post your questions. Right, so as, as that part back. comes up, the question will come up along with oh, right. that. And what's that. nice about the, the web apps is they don't take any bandwidth. Um, the, the files are stored out on the, the cloud, as they say. Um, so we've actually just touched on a couple things. Uh, you mentioned the snowball mic. I mentioned these um, handheld recorders. The Snowball is a USB microphone. It's a very simple um, scheme for recording it. And it's a great quality microphone, I might add, too. Um, I have one set up in my room um, at, at Parkland High School that I just always have on a mic stand plugged into a computer. So it's as easy as hitting you know, play, or I'm sorry, record on um, GarageBand or Audacity or whatever program I'm using. But uh, what I wanted to point to is that um, in, in the book, there's a whole chapter on, on sound recording. And then there's another chapter on multi-track recording that describes um, all of these different options, these different schemes for recording and how you would do that and how you would do a sound check and, and what cables go where um, in, in a conceptual, generic way. So it applies to pretty much any USB mic or any um, handheld recorder or, or other microphones that are more complicated, like an XLR microphone that would need a, a, an interface, a breakout box. So all of that kind of stuff is broken down in the book um, and described. And then we've also talked already about web applications, and there's a whole section in the book about some really, I think, exciting musical web applications. Um, SoundCloud would be for audio, um, but uh, NoteFlight, for instance, uh, for, for uh, music notation. They don't necessarily replace um, other applications. We still use Finale, for instance, at Parkland High School for some projects, but, but yet NoteFlight opens up a lot of uh, things. So we'll be talking a lot about... Um, Are we going to go back to NoteFlight? We will. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, while we're still on recording, though, um, I wanted to mention another uh, tip. This isn't so much in the book, but I tell you what, every time I speak to band directors, um, I always mention this application, Amazing Slow Downer. It's a, it's a shareware program, and if you don't know about it, um, it's just a very simple app for dragging and dropping audio, playing it back at slower tempo. Do you, have you used this? I use it all the time. And you Could can you also describe change how you use uh, I, it's, I think it's great for doing transcriptions. If you want to help have a kid figure out a lick. Like a jazz solo. A jazz solo or anything. Uh, or you're a guitar student even. Mm -hmm. And you want it to really get it accurately. I mean, I, I, when I started writing, was still in the days of plunking it out on a piano and listening to it on a CD over and over and over and over. Am I getting the right chords? Am I getting the right sounds? Am I writing it on the piece of paper correctly? Yeah. To be able to loop something and to slow it down and to really get it accurate is really amazing. And you can also analyze what's happening. So that's how I've used it. Uh, and also to change key, if you want to change key. Right. Within reason. Yeah. You know, you can't There's really some artifacts. It. If you uh, change the key too drastically, you'll hear like a, um, it just doesn't sound as, yeah, as pure. But it's a really great, great, great program. Yeah. Uh, at my level, uh, again, teaching elementary band now, 
Um, I use Amazing Slow Downer almost every single lesson where, um, you know, those band demos, you know, our music is recorded yeah. by Alfred and, and, and sent, distributed all over the, the country and, and uh, people get these demo CDs and so do all the other publishers. So if I'm performing something where I have a demo CD of a band, you know, playing a great recording, a great reference recording of the piece, the very first time I hand out the, the sheet music to a student in a lesson, by you know, 10, 10, 15 minutes into that lesson, I can have an entire trumpet section or an entire clarinet section performing their part along with the band on the recording, but at a much slower tempo. So being able to slow the tempo down um, allows me to very early on get them to uh, rehearse and hear all the other parts and know how their part interacts. Um, which in our school district, where we don't have regular ensemble rehearsals, that's really, really helpful. So by the time we do get to the point that we start our ensemble rehearsals leading up to a concert, the kids pretty much already know yeah, that's great. Um, how their part uh, fits in. So that's kind of a, uh, you know, Smart Music is, is another app um, that uh, many of uh, band directors use Smart Music, and, and there are a lot of titles, um, but, but not every title. Um, you know, you can get a, a demo recording that has dozens and dozens of titles, and maybe only five or, or, or eight of those will be on Smart Music. So um, uh, Amazing Slow Downer is a good, um, a good uh, low-cost, uh, free. it's not freeware, it's shareware application that uh, you might consider. Um, let's talk about Web2 apps. And um, I, before we get to NoteFlight, which is really a big one, that, that was a game changer. When that came out about two and a half years ago, it, it really changed the way I teach theory. And um, um, uh, my, my uh, music production class uses a little bit for lead sheets, but it's mostly in the theory teaching um, that I use it. But uh, let's just talk about general um, web apps. Um, and again, the book addresses these and, and breaks it down. And there's a lot more in the book than what we're going to get to. But there's some general web apps a lot of you probably are using. Uh, Google Docs, for instance, would be an example of a web application. You can type a, uh, you can use the text editor, uh, Google's um, version of Word, for instance, or you can use a spreadsheet, Google's version of Excel. So all of those um, are examples of web apps because they, the, the, the files and the program itself resides out on the internet in the cloud. And uh, we can all use them for free. And as long as we have access to the internet um, in a browser, we, we can use those. Um, another uh, example of web applications would be wikis. I don't know. You say you have an in-house system. Do you use any kind of wiki? We don't. Or? We have other teachers that are very involved in wikis. We use the Google Docs, uh, but just the teachers do. My coworker and I use it for the music library uh -huh. uh, inventory, for things like that, that we can either one of us can update at any time. Uh, but I could definitely see how that could be useful for, for kids. And I'm learning more about wikis as we go, mostly from, from your site because it's so involved and detailed. I've posted your wiki site on our server okay. <laughs> for kids to look at for just the links page. Right. Uh, so it, it seems really interactive and yeah. intuitive. I, and I have several wikis. One of, the one that Chris is referring to is called Watson Music dot wikispaces dot com and at Watson Music dot wikispaces dot com there's a links uh, page that has about 40 40 or more um, web applications that are musical that you could use for creativity for creating whether it's uh, online drum sequencers or online uh, pattern sequencers online notation programs online audio recording programs and other uh, musical creativity uh, kind of uh, applications you can use all these for free as long as you can get on the internet um, and have a fairly uh, good connection you know high speed connection um, all these web applications work really well um, the wiki that band directors might be uh, interested in that I've started is one called elementaryinstrumental.wikispaces.com. And uh, that, that wiki, for instance, has dozens of warm-ups um, that either myself or colleagues have posted. So if you're looking for a good, you know, fourth grade, fifth grade, middle school level um, warm-up for various instruments, you could look in the, the downloadable music section of elementaryinstrumental.wikispaces.com and download some uh, free, um, you know, resources for, for your students. There's some videos on how to clean instruments, you know, instrument maintenance are posted up there. Um, I started a database of... Um, Again, it's called Elementary Instrumental because that's what I do now. Um, but it has a database of, um, of uh, compositions that are written at uh, the, that level that people who join the wiki can then add their favorite, you know, what's, what's my favorite grade one or grade one half or grade one and a half piece um, to, the, to the database. So if you're a, a band director looking for a holiday song, uh, you could go to that database and see what some contributors to the wiki have considered to be um, successful pieces with their uh, elementary bands. So, that, so wikis, uh, are, are, again, I don't have to buy any software to do that. I just log on to wikispaces.com and, and start out with a free, um, 
account, and I can create all these different wikis. But let's get to NoteFlight because that really touches on the uh, the topic of creativity, and I do think it has a lot to offer for even um, instrumental music teachers whose you know primary job is to teach technique and, and performing in ensembles, and yet. Um, uh, I think uh, if you're a, a band director and you don't know about Note Flight, you want to know about Note Flight. Um, what makes it so uh, unique um, is that because it's a web app, uh, students who use this program, they can go home and they don't have to have anything different than, a, than the computer that you have at school. So whether, whether they're at home or whether they're at school, they're, they're logging on to noteflight.com. They're typesetting their music or they're using it to create their music, uh, but, but then they can go home and continue that um, as homework or just a, for fun uh, without having to buy any software. And um, I mean, I could go on forever about so many uh, cool things that you could do with NoteFlight. Um, what are some things that... Is, I haven't used it yet. I, the first experience I had with it was looking at it from a link from your site, and it looked very finale-like in, mm -hmm. its, in its layout. Uh, and it looked... It reminded me a lot of... Uh, what was the finale free program that it used to be? Notepad. Finale Notepad. It right. seemed very similar to that. And we've used that here as a, a composition. Sure. But again, it was very... Uh, a lot of instruction about how to use the program and less instruction about how to write music. Right. So this seems pretty intuitive, an online thing. The features that I really am excited to explore is that, that you can take it home. Right. So that, and you mentioned in the book how parents can look at it. And yep. that I think is amazing. Yeah, you can email. kids and parents to see what their kids are doing. Right. It can live on our computer here at school and the parents will have no idea. If they see their kids working on it at home, uh, they can see the value in it as That's well. right. And I, and I like that feature. And the comment feature too, I think... Uh, the peer sharing That's right. part of it. Yeah. Um, let me describe some ways that we've used it. Uh, some of these are, in, again, in my elective classes, and some of them are actually with my band students. Um, but again, many band directors, I know for sure, uh, often have to teach elective classes like music theory or uh, maybe, a, maybe a keyboard class or a guitar class or a, um, um, a music production class. So I think in some of the elective classes, you'll definitely see a, a usefulness for it. Um, but certainly even the, the, the instrumental teachers, um, I know as, a, as an elementary band teacher, as, almost as soon as I've taught a kid how to play three or four notes, they come into the next lesson, Dr. Watson, look at this song, listen to this song I figured out. And sometimes, this is how crazy it is, how much they have this uh, impulse to create. Sometimes they'll actually go to the trouble of, with a pencil, drawing a five-line staff onto a blank sheet of paper and drawing their little note heads. You know, sometimes it looks kind of like Gr Gregorian chant. Sometimes it's actually, you know, they'll, they'll have stems and everything. And they'll have a sequence of notes that they've, they've somehow discovered by experimenting with their instrument. And they'll have... Um, you know, created some music. And uh, even uh, and when that happens, I'll, I'll just show them Note Flight and say, why sure. don't you go home and see if mom or dad will let you uh, get a free Note Flight account so you can start composing this music. And, uh, and, and it's not every kid, but, but you know, a, a good subset of my, my band uh, will do that. But we also do have a, a summer camp in our school district where uh, kids come and participate in small group uh, or uh, small uh, uh, sectional rehearsals. Mm -hmm. They have a, an ensemble period that they meet, but they also have an elective. And one of the electives we offer is uh, composition arranging, composing and arranging. And uh, when I do the camp, I didn't do it this year because I had some other activities going on. Uh, but when I've done the camp, that's the one I teach, and I use NoteFlight. And I have kids uh, do a simple period, you know, antecedent consequent. I don't use those terms with fourth <laughs> graders or fifth graders, but a simple... Um, melody that involves repetition, super easy to do with copy and paste in Note Flight. And again, they can uh, go home and show mom it and play it back for mom. Um, and we actually have, we uh, pick a handful of kids to, uh, to perform these in the, in the fi final concert. We have a sort of a demo concert at the end of the week uh, for mom and dad. We'll have maybe three kids perform their compositions. Um, and another project I do that week that's described in the book is called a pedal point duet and it's one of my favorite lessons I've ever developed and I've used that this is true I've used this with fourth and fifth grade band students I've used it with um, high school music theory students high school music production students who generally aren't um, uh, you know playing they're, they're, they're non-traditional uh, they haven't learned formally yeah. maybe an instrument a lot of them um, I've used it with university composition students um, and university music ed students and every level that does this pedal point duet seems to turn out some really good music. So well, you, well, you point out, I mean, pedal point is such an important and effective musical tool that it, it, it warrants every level. And I think that even just listening, my daughter is obsessed with The Lion King mm -hmm. right now. So we're listening, I think it was Circle of Life yesterday. And I'm hearing pedal points throughout right. the whole thing. And it's just when it's such an important, that's the thing about the book is that you point out these are major musical concepts that are being right. taught to the kids. And the computer is a tool to help tap into that creativity and yep. into those compositional elements. And I think that's what, what makes it right. so unique. 
And the book also talks about you know coaching kids through using those and and uh, what what you mentioned with your band, the idea of evaluating and and peer um, feedback to one another, and all that's um, discussed in the book. But um, but no flight's really a great um, application because kids don't need to buy it. Um, I mean there is a there is a pay or a subscribe version of it um, that's that's definitely useful if it becomes really integrated in a program, but. Um, but so, let me just mention some other things. Sure. Okay, so we talked about the composing projects I've done with the um, the composition elective of camp, and also just the sort of here and there uh, students in in instrumental lessons uh, where they they want to compose anyway, and they're they're starting to write music. So we'll we'll give them that tool to go home. But um, some other things I'll do is, for instance, in my high school um, theory classes, I have all the canons that my students have to learn to sing in in, a, in uh, AP Music Theory and in Music Theory Two. All those canons are typeset with Note Flight, and they're um, linked on my wiki. So a student that's in my theory class will go to the, the wiki for, for the theory class, click on the canon, and they'll actually be seeing the canon in note flight, and they'll uh, see it scroll and play uh, so they can hear it, and they can solfege along with the canon as it plays. You could even embed the canon so that they don't have to click on a link. You actually see the music inside the wiki. Wow. So just like you can put a Google Doc inside a wiki, you can put note flight music embedded in a wiki. So either way you'd want to do that, um, uh, and, and here's another cool thing. I never had to typeset any of those canons in NoteFlight. I, they all existed. I'd already typeset them in, in Finale, but um, Finale allows you to export um, as XML files. NoteFlight allows you to import XML files. So I just took all my Finale canons, uploaded them to NoteFlight, and, um, and I want to say I use that kind of hand-in-hand -hand, uh, NoteFlight and Finale connection a lot. I uh, had a student a couple years ago um, who won a uh, composition contest. He, he did a setting of Psalm 12 and won uh, the Bach Choir of Bethlehem has a, a competition. And um, he started out in, fina in uh, note flight, working at home, showing me drafts in school, um, kind of tweaking it and, and coaching him and shepherding him along in the piece. But when it got to the point that he needed to typeset it professionally, you know, then we have note flight, or we have a finale uh, in our lab, and, and he was able to put in the lyrics and do some really nice um, typesetting. So when he when he entered the the contest, he was you know giving a real nice looking product too. That's amazing. Just for people that are just thinking about wikis, you know, and are kind of getting excited about it because they, they hear the possibilities. Is it intuitive? Is it simple to get going for the beginner? Oh, yeah. The, the wiki tools for creating the content when you want to po post media, like, like a, a note flight, it's as simple as um, you know, copying and pasting code in a little box. And there's icons that kind of remind you of the icons when you're using Microsoft Word. Um, okay. There's an icon for putting a picture in. There's an icon for putting a hypertext link in. There's an icon for typing text. And um, it's, it's very user-friendly. Because, I mean, these are very, they seem like very advanced qualities that yes. you can do on a website but you know so i could see people being a little bit tentative like oh boy that's too advanced for me I, you know let me just post a, right. a note well you, know? you want to start slow i wouldn't yeah. say that everybody's gonna you know start using note flight wikis um uh, soundcloud uh, uh, not all at once all not at in the once, same right? year and um really um there's some lessons in the book that honestly you just might want to use one lesson one year kind of feel the water well that's the thing that i, I liked with the lessons as i read through all the different lesson plans you can adapt them to any of your teaching situations. I, I, for myself, I'm thinking, how can I adapt this for a band class, a concert band? Mm -hmm. you know, or how can I, in fact, the links from your wiki I used in drum lessons. Uh -huh. We actually went down, probably like everyone, trying to get all of my percussionists to read notes uh, on the clef. So we went down to the computer lab and we did some, note, some of the note reading right. drills. Uh, and they loved it. First of all, it was like a field trip because we got to walk down the hall to the computer lab. So it was a different thing for them. They were doing hands-on on the computer, and they actually learned on it. It was kind of a little bit of a, a competition between the kids of who can get more of the right notes on the screen. Uh -huh. uh, so that, that type of adaptability of the lessons that are described in the book, I think, is something that's really appealing to no matter what you teach, choir, band, yeah. general music. Uh, and that's one of the things that I particularly liked about it. Right. All the lessons have um, ideas for adapting them to higher or lower levels. So if the, if the lesson uh, described seems like it's a middle school general music level, there'll be um, some uh, suggestions if you're going to do this with um, high school kids or if you're going to do this with younger kids, how to you know, beef it up or hose it down uh, to make it uh, work for that. And also, um, there's, uh, none of the lessons are really um, technology specific. They, they could be done with GarageBand. They could be done with Audacity. Uh, the ones that are described in the book, there's 29 lessons in the book, and there's never one application that's, that's required required to use uh, to do any lesson. So whether you're a PC, whether you're a Mac, uh, whether you're, you're young um, in technology and you're just getting you know, up to speed with something, or whether you're using a higher-end program like Pro Tools, um, pretty much all the lessons uh, will work.
Um, another thing we did with uh, Note Flight um, is this, uh, I, I teach some classes in the summer for Villanova Summer Music Program, and one of the students who took um, one of my classes, um, he was the one who showed me that summer, two summers ago, how to use wikis. Like at, oh, okay. a, at a break, he was just saying, Scott, do you know about wikis? And next thing you know, uh, later that summer, I was creating the, the wikis that you've seen. Um, but uh, he, uh, he also, um, when I introduced him to Note Flight, we got this idea that his music theory kids would compose some music and my music theory kids would compose some music and we would have our students comment on one another's um, by, by, by visiting the note flight link my kids could see his students compositions and his students could see my students compositions and then use the comment feature um, in note flight so that they could and you don't have to have the comment feature on so if it's an elementary kid turn it off you know and and they don't have to have uh, you know unwarranted uh, unsolicited comments but but we were doing using that for our high school uh, uh, music theory kids too Terrific. Um, well, there's a lot more we could say about that, about Web 2.0 apps in general, you know, those free music web apps, um, and also about NoteFlight. But I think we're going to have to move on uh, as we're watching the clock here. Some other topics I want to I want to touch on. Um, one one topic that I do mention in a project in the book about uh, my music production class. And again, imagine a group of kids who are like the garage band people who you know play guitar, maybe don't know how to notate music or read music that well or maybe just very beginning level but they're very creative they have, they're very expressive they they have a lot of creativity in them and um and some sometimes it's a band kid too it's or an orchestra kid or a chorus kid who does um have some deep musical um uh, experience and, and great sensibilities but but we have this hodgepodge in the music production class and we produce a cd and um that's all this, every step of that pro process of a, a semester-long class that leads to the production of a CD, everything is, is described in the book um, as an example of a, of a very integrated um, creativity-based curriculum. But I just want to touch on one aspect at the very end of the, uh, the project, um, and I try to do this at the end of every activity I do that uses um, creativity. I want to have um, a way to voice uh, and share what they've what they've created. Whether it's a you know go around at the end of the class and just say, hey, let's hear what you did. Um, you know, play 20 seconds of what you did. Or whether it's a, a recital or an in-school um, performance, in-class kind of thing. But but at the end of the music productions um, unit on on creating a CD, we actually produce a CD and um, we post it on um, the iTunes Store. And I wanted to talk about the way we do that. There's a service called TuneCore that has teamed up with Alfred Publishing and they call it Alfred Records. And what you do is you upload your music um, using their label, Alfred Records, and pretty much all of the technical stuff of how you get your music onto the iTunes store is done for you by Alfred Records uh, with using TuneCore. And uh, what happens is you end up getting royalties for the sale of your, your, your downloads um, at the iTunes store. It also works with things like Rhapsody or Amazon or all the other online um, uh, vendors of, of, of music, of digital music. So the kids in my class really feel hip when they can say that they're... they're they go search it on iTunes. Yes, when their CD it. is yeah. available on iTunes Store and people all over the world, you know, we know that people, when we get our royalty report, we know that there's people in Australia who've downloaded, yeah. you know, their, their, their track. Um, now, we don't make a whole lot of money, actually, on this one project, um, but we do make enough that we, we give more than $1,000 away to a charity. Um, that we, wow. That's how we do it. It could be a fundraiser for your school. It could be for your, you know, to buy the... Uh, the, the color guard, you know, their equipment that year. It could be whatever, you know. You, you, you decide uh, what you would use it for. But um, we actually use it just as a, a, a good feeling in the community to, to you know, to, we got this great gear at Parkland High School and we're, we're using it to help uh, our neighbors at a youth shelter, say, or something like that's that. That's amazing. And that's one of the aspects, I'm, gonna, I'm sure you're going to talk about it later when you get to the principles in the book, is that culminating end result sharing part of the, the project, of all the projects. And that's something that stood out in the book to me as something that's really important is... I guess when I first read that as one of the principles, I was like, okay, I could see that. But when I actually read the chapter and I thought about mm -hmm. it, it, it became one of the more important principles to me, that sharing and celebratory aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And that kind of tapped into a few things. Kids love yeah. to share, yep. uh, which I think is the first principle. And the last one is sharing again, right, yeah. and celebrating, and what a great motivator. And I'm sure you're going to touch on that. But, again, if kids know they're going to do a, you know, Alfred Records and, and it's going to be on iTunes, they're going to give you their best work because they know it's going to be out there for people to listen to, and they're going to really be excited to do their best job to, pr to create the best product. And if it's for a homeless shelter or for yeah, something yeah. even better, it just elevates, to me, I think that that would elevate their commitment to whatever the project is and give you their, and the music, really, their, their full attention. Right. And, and I love that part of it. And I think especially uh, this webcast, which is really um, 
focus towards band directors, you can you can relate to this. A lot of my best stuff <laughs> uh, comes from just the, my training as a band director. You know, what we do is applied music. We teach we don't teach people about playing the trumpet. We teach them to hold the trumpet, to buzz their lips, uh, to you know to use their tongue to to uh, initiate a tone, and and it's hands on. And so um, the same thing. If you were preparing um, all semester uh, with your concert band and you never actually performed in public. Yeah. Imagine the difference uh, in the motivation of your students. So not that every performance um, has to be um, very formal. Uh, sometimes it's very informal. Sometimes, like I said, it's just at the end of a 45-minute period. Um, I'll ask if there's any volunteers that want to share what they've done in a little... Ex- yeah, you, you mentioned know. that even with like picking your favorite sound. Right. You know, utilizing the keyboard. Yeah. So, and that's the other thing that's to me. It, it doesn't have to be some big community celebration. Hey, Johnny, share with us what you found. Oh, that was an interesting sound. Okay, Susie, you know... They're willing to do that. And, I, and the other thing I like about that is using – kids might want to do that to be a distraction in class. Mm-hmm. Listen to all my sounds all at once. But when you're giving them the opportunity to share it in a controlled sense, yeah. they still get to express that nature. But it's a classroom management thing where it's not haywire. Yeah, and other kids can you know, say, that was lame. Or, <laughs> or, or they can say, wow, I didn't know that sound it was even on the synth that we were using. Right. Or I didn't know that sound was in GarageBand or it's, whatever. Uh, it's very creative. And, and you point this out in the book. That a simple project of picking your favorite sound through the keyboard, it takes what kids are going to want to do in that class anyway. They're going to want to push all the buttons. Yep. By doing this as a, as a project, they're learning how to activate the controls on the keyboard. They're learning a little bit about the black and white keys. They're learning how to work the volume knob. They're working about, you know, some of the technical aspects of the, the keyboard they're starting to learn. But they didn't realize that they were going to learn all that. You right. know? And, and you outline that really clearly with, with great well, objectives. You. Um, I guess I should even uh, step back a second and just say that uh, what Chris is referring to um, is th- the book is really built around um, eight um, pedagogical principles. Uh, the the book sort of, in addition to presenting, you know, what is the sound recording software or, or multi-track, um, you know, recording software or what are, what is notation, you know, computer-based notation software and, and a lot of different categories. Um, really, the the big thrust of the book is giving um, teachers or suggesting to teachers a methodology. Here's how, if you're using um, you know, technology to unlock student creativity, here are eight principles that if you build those into your lesson plans, um, you're going to have a lot of fun with the kids and they're going to produce some great music. And, and so one of those, uh, the last principle, is about sharing and um, you know, building a performance or a recital or some kind of a sharing component into a lesson. And, um, and, again, we're not going to have a chance to really talk about all eight. Um, that's uh, something I hope that uh, people who— Maybe we'll do another hour. Yeah. <laughs> and can talk about that. They're great. And they, they, they cross the lines. All eight interact with one another. And it, it it's, it'd be great to talk about it with somebody right. or with a bunch of people to, yeah, to talk yeah. about them. So, so, for instance, the one about performing, not only did, do we describe why it's important and how uh, the outcome could be, there's some examples um, of what students have shared in my teaching and actually in the teaching of my colleagues. Um, there's, a, there's about 60 different student products, uh, you know, projects and, and examples that, that students have done that are posted on a companion website. So if you want to hear, you know, what are, what are the tracks from the, the holiday CD sound like or what are the tracks from the, the student-written um, uh, operetta sound like or what do... Um, you know, the different loop-based compositions that your kids do with GarageBand sound like. We have examples of those uh, on the website. Um, but there's a lot of different ways electronically and using today's technology that you can have kids, quote-unquote, perform, like posting their music to a wiki, like yeah. putting it on the iTunes store, like burning it on a CD that you sell and distribute and, and things like that. Um, and the book also talks about all sorts of things like public domain and fair use. And, you know, we mentioned Alfred Records, and there's a mechanical um, royalty issue there. And, again, that's explained and addressed, um, although Alfred makes it pretty easy to handle that kind of stuff. Um, that, that is, again, uh, more of what's in the, in the book. Um, do you have any kids? Uh, first of all, I want to mention uh, this is sort of like not planned, but uh, Chris has shared with me some music that his son has composed, uh, which is great stuff. I mean, it's electronic music that I just couldn't believe blew my mind that, that he was doing. Uh, I was just going to ask you about your own um, band students or other students you work with in uh, the elective teaching. Do you do any composing? Uh, or I've had success and failure in trying to incorporate composition in my classes. Um, I had at one time a composition class, but I had 10 kids and four computers, yeah. and it was just overwhelming. And the only, the only, this is at the time when there weren't Web 2.0 right. programs available. So I had installed Finale on all of them. And it's one of those things. I am a, a Finale user, and I know my controls so well, and I get I'm very productive in it. 
this was a half year course. Mm -hmm. So to get kids to have the theoretical knowledge and to get kids to have the knowledge of the program itself, it, it just didn't work. There was right. just too much trying to learn how it worked. I've tried doing uh, when Finale Notepad was available. True. That was a little more successful. Yep. I did it as part of my concert band, my freshman band. We did some, some lessons on musical form. I gave some parameters, and I had them each write a, a melodic line in Notepad and email to Right. Them. That was pretty successful. So I think in my own teaching, I've had some... I think the Web 2.0 thing is more encouraging for me to try to get back into it, to get more kids involved in right. the compositional element, even in a mass concert band class. The stuff that I see my son doing is amazing. He's incorporating 8-bit Game Boy technology with his acoustic guitar, with uh, FL Studio he uses, and posting it on SoundCloud. And he does reviews for other websites right. and stuff. So it all falls in line with, uh, with how to use technology to get kids yep. to be creative. Uh, so I, I have used, I've had varying degrees of success, but I'm, I'm looking forward to yeah. With, if I had note flight, I think that alone would have saved me so much teaching time in the classroom of you have to push this button, you have to push that button. I think if kids can do that at home, yep. they can have, you know, they're so quick to learn things. They can figure it out. Well, when I teach note flight, um, regardless of the level of student I'm working with, um, I teach them four commands. <laughs> it's that simple that you can get started uh, typesetting uh, with four commands. And then um, this is sort of part of what the book's uh, thrust is, is that um, when your goal is musical creativity, uh, students are going to find a way. They're going to they're uh, find a way to accomplish that. So, for instance, Ryan, who wrote that setting of Psalm 12, he did some pretty sophisticated stuff that he had to learn how to do using Finale. And Finale, you know, is a professional level uh, notation program. Yeah. And I don't mean to say uh, by emphasizing note flight uh, that Finale, you know, isn't useful. I use it every day in my teaching. It's a super, it's probably the tool I use the most. But, but Ryan had to discover how to, to do certain techniques, certain features of Finale that other kids I don't need to share. So why right. would I share? But because he had some creative goals that had to be accomplished, he was willing to, he was motivated to learn how to use those features in Finale. Yeah, and looking at his example, he had uh, you know, a lot of 16th notes and rests and layering of voices. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was pretty involved. Right. And I think tapping back into one of the principles is about giving, providing limitations. Yep. You know, I kind of compare Finale to, to picking off of a menu at a diner. Right. You know, I always have trouble when we go to a diner because there's so many pages and so many choices, I just can't pick one. And, and if I only had five tools to choose from, <laughs> if I had five meals... That I can choose, it'd be a lot easier. And we're going to be going out to lunch after this, so I'll, I'll look forward to seeing, <laughs> witnessing that in person. There you go. Um, yeah, so um, uh, I'll give a quick shout out to a friend of mine, uh, Barbara Friedman, who teaches in uh, Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, she has this great quote I use all the time, but it's entirely Barb's, and it's that uh, teach music and the technology will follow. And that's the goal, is to teach musically. And kids will find ways to achieve um, those technical things. So don't, don't center on the tech. Don't make it about Mac versus PC or Finale versus Sibelius. Make it about creating good music and using universal principles of musicianship and, and musical creation. Music that has made um, the music of lasting worth that we all admire, whether it's jazz, whether it's uh, you know, concert band, symphonic band, whether it's orchestra. All of that music seems to have a, a subset of um, principles that, that make that music stand. Uh, this might be a, a good place for a quick question from Dave. Oh, and we've had this Facebook yeah. wall up, and if there's yeah. any other questions, yeah. Very quickly, uh, this is talking about new technology and old teachers. <laughs> Dave from New Jersey mentioned, uh, how do you get the training on new technology if you're an old guy like me trying to learn? I'm tired of everyone telling me, everyone I encounter <laughs> telling me to just play around with it and you'll get it. Maybe it's just best for me to go and retire and live in the woods. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good idea, Dave, because you're motivated yes. enough to want to learn. Right. And, you know, as a hermit, it's not easy to, <laughs> to teach your band. Uh, but, uh, no, it's a great question. And uh, I would say that the organization Time, one of the uh, sponsors of this webcast, um, Time uh, Technology for Music Education, you can go to their, their website at time.org or ti-me.org. But anyway, Time um, has a, um, a really r refined, polished curriculum of training, teacher training. Uh, it's really focused at K-12 to teachers' Um, using technology, integrating it into their, their teaching. And um, I think those courses, which generally end up as one-week kind of immersion courses, you get three graduate credits. Um, and I, th I really think it's worth your time, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> to take a time class because those teachers um, are usually themselves uh, K-12 to teachers or they've had a, a great experience with that kind of – they're very, very aware of what um, in the trenches teachers really yeah. want to know. And here's the tools, and they're expert users of those tools. And um, – 
I, I just think it's a good, that's a good model. And I know in my state, um, we have a, a thing, Pennsylvania has a thing called Act 48, where every five years you have to get 180 credits of professional development. So you could use it for your Act 48. Um, a lot of teachers and school districts to advance on a salary scale have to take graduate courses. So yeah. you, know, you can kill two birds with one stone. I think it's also worth mentioning that, that he mentioned being an older teacher. I think a lot of older teachers are looking at newer technology. And I think that it's, you're never too advanced in your career to start integrating this stuff. I think uh, uh, younger teachers are worried, more worried or concerned, not worried, about what they're doing and getting it. A comfortable teacher can start to outreach and see how ways they can energize their class. And I don't think that fear of, of learning the program should stop you from diving in and, and getting it. Yeah. Not to say to just go and figure it out. I think a class like you're suggesting is probably one of the best ways to do it. So you can actually get hands-on help right. for a week and really learn how to integrate it. But, you know, I've noticed people who enjoy using technology, like yourself, like mm -hmm. myself, um, are usually really um, happy to share yeah. and come alongside you. And if you ever have uh, a chance to take workshops at uh, different state conferences or if you um, just email. I mean, there's a, a music professional learning network. Um, go to mpln.org. Uh, join um, more than 1,000, maybe almost 2,000 now, uh, teachers who are part of that. Or, um, or, or, or time has a... a, a a community, a sort of a email kind of a um, listserv thing. I mean, there's just people, you, you know, if somebody sends me an email and, and asks me a question, I, I, I never, and, I, and, and all the people I know who are, you know, part of time and, and, and other people like uh, us that use technology, we've, ne we've never said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's, a, that's a secret. I instead, we're usually action. like really happy to kind of, <laughs> and usually the, 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 the person who's emailed us gets a longer email than they really wanted because uh, we'll, we'll, we're really happy to, yeah. to, to give, give them suggestions. So, I mean, that's you, a good point. there's a lot sure. of colleagues that, out there that are, um, happy to share. And, you know, um, some, some music teachers are doing some really creative, um, wonderful things. At the very end of the book, I kind of just take a small uh, step aside from, from student uh, application just to talk about teachers themselves who are using technology and unlocking their creativity. I mean, how many other band directors do you know who are using Finale to create custom arrangements? All the time. Uh, although a lot of them are trying to get me to go to Sibelius, but a lot of them use a Finale. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I, I should say <laughs> notation software. Notation uh, software. We're, we're both Finale users, yeah. but, but Sibelius is great too. Yeah. Uh, they're, all, they're all using it. Uh, the recording thing, or anytime you do anything. I know that anytime I've shared that we've done Skype conferences uh -huh. with other composers, uh, everybody wants to know how you do it. Right. You know, and, and I think everybody is amazed with how simple it is. Yeah. You know, and how willing people are to do it. You know, we can Skype conference in... A composer. We can Skype conference uh, an instrumentalist. We can Skype conference another band. One of the things that I want to do, I have a friend that's teaching in China for the next year. Oh. I don't know how we're going to work it out with times, but I would love for my band to Your perform band has to for come his in at band. Two in the morning. Well, yeah, I'll try to get them to come in early. Uh, but just the concept that it's a huge world, but we can make it really small with our internet connection. Right. And it's and it's very accessible, and it's so easy to do. Other teachers are energized by the concepts uh, immediately. Right. You know, so I've never had anybody say, like, oh, I, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, a mutual friend of ours, Travis Weller, who's mm -hmm. a, a composer as well. Uh, he teaches at uh, Mercer uh, Junior High School, Junior and High School um, in um, uh, Pittsburgh area, I think it's it's out in the western part of Pennsylvania, and um, he ha he did that for for uh, and doesn't it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't like I had a big conference. Uh, he had me Skype, and me and uh, Brian Belmages and uh, Andrew Boysen, the three of us, had music that was being performed in a in a concert that he gave a couple years ago. So he just had us. Uh, Scott, would you be ready? Would you be ready to just introduce your song at eight o'clock at night? That's great. <laughs> um, so we were on standby, and um, a friend of his, Joe Pisano, uh, a friend of ours, uh, Joe Pisano, um, you know, sort of worked the. The having it ready because you know Travis is conducting; he's busy with the program. But it wasn't a, a, a very technically um, cumbersome uh, process to just have a large screen in the auditorium where uh, uh, Brian and, and Andrew and myself could talk to the audience and say, "This piece you're going to hear is you know this this is the genesis of the piece, or here's what led me to write it." Um, and how wonderful is that? To, it's, to... A, it's amazing. I, I think the thing is that the kids, it's there. It's always we've done it for the past two years, so we've had two really outlined. Mm -hmm. sessions with it and we do like we do st steps leading up to it where they do their own little bit of research about the music and then we pose questions and we do a follow-up survey it's the most memorable thing for them and i know that in 10 years they might not remember the piece or the composer but they'll remember that they had the composer in the room with right. them who was in indiana or illinois or in or in canada and it just connects them with the music which is the ultimate goal it right. energized them 
And actually, my colleague quoted it once, which is when Vince Gassy was our guest. Yeah. And she told Vince, I wish you were here every day because that was the best they've ever performed it. And that's a quote that we stand out with because yeah. that's exactly true. It's a motivator and it connects kids to music. Right. And that's what our ultimate goal is. Yeah. So some great, great, great technology uh, ideas that, um, that band directors are using, too. It's not just for students to be creative. Um, um, I want to mention, I've already uh, shared that the book has 29 uh, lessons. And um, again, if you're a band director, chances are you're, I mean, you might only be doing instrumental music in your, in your job, but uh, you might have some electives. And pretty much all those lessons could be used in a music theory, a music production kind of class. Um, uh, in fact, I was just reading this uh, month's Instrumentalist uh, magazine. There's a, a Georgia band director, um, his name's Chris Harper. Um, and, and there's an, a feature basically on him and how he's developed this music technology. It's like a burgeoning program. Um, he started real small, and it's, now it's very, very big. So if you, if you get a chance to look at the August um, uh, issue of Instrumentalist, you'll see there's, there's um, uh, band directors who are really tapping into um, you know, a student population that, that heretofore we haven't really worked with as much. Um, I don't know if I want to say a bad joke about, except for in drumline. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but here, heretofore, we, we, we don't generally get to work with students who, who don't have that, uh, you know, the, the, the lessons since fourth grade or fifth grade, um, who don't have, um, you know, traditional music training. Yeah. And, um, and it seems like he's having a ball with it. I know I, I, I really enjoy the teaching I do with them. Um, and the book does, um, in addition to having those 29 lessons, it mentions some other published resources. Alfred, for instance, has a music tech series that has uh, a composition book, um, a sequencing book, and a, a keyboard book. So those would be some out-of-the-box um, uh, lessons that you just you know, purchase and use. You wouldn't have to... We're, we're, just to interject, we're, we're fortunate enough to have a guitar program at the high school, and it is a different population than... There's some crossover, so it's not exactly accurate, mm. but it's a different population. And I feel like uh, we have a terrific teacher, really dedicated, and he is integrating technology. Right. Pro Tools, GarageBand, they're recording, learning about layering, mixing. Yeah. If you're starting up a program, what I like about the book is that if I had no idea how I was going to do this, it's a step one process, and it kind of talks it through in common language. I made a joke to Scott that I didn't have to look up any of the words in it. I could read them all myself. <laughs> but I will say there is a, there is a glossary at the there back of the glossary. book. Um, so if you're using a microphone and you want to know what compression is, it explains it. You, know, you don't have to get into that, but there is a glossary. But it's basic technology. It's, basic, it's, it's not about... As much as it is about the technology, mm -hmm. it isn't. Right. You know, it's generic enough that whatever program you have, to whatever level, not everybody is uh, lucky enough to have computers all available to us. So there's ways to adapt the programs to having less computer units per students, you know, how to share group right. projects. And, you know, it's a really good startup way. If you need a curriculum resource, you have the idea, I want to infuse this technology in my class, but I'm not sure where to start. I think it's an easy to read you, know, you were surprised that I read the book in, yeah. in the short amount of time that I had it. But it was an easy read. Knowing everything that's going on in your life this summer, <laughs> I was really flattered that you took the, the time to, to, to it was, take a look at it. It was an easy read. I enjoyed it. And, you know, I came out of it motivated. I want to try some of this stuff. And I think for people that are out there that are on the fence, yeah. I think this is a perfect book for you. If you have that inkling that you want to infuse this kind of thing, get your students to create because that's when you know that they're really learning when they can create something. This is a great method to help right. you know, hey, jump in the pool. Let me just mention something, because you, you mentioned guitar class. And one, yeah. of, this, one of the uh, uh, students who took uh, one of my Villanova classes this summer was teaching a guitar elective and uh, created a lesson plan that he's going to do uh, when he goes back to school this year, um, which I thought was fantastic. And the idea is just to, he has the students learn to, to um, you know, play a, a handful of chords, and then he has them create um, a chord progression um, a composition basically they're, they're creating a, a chord progression uh, maybe for a, a verse and a refrain or something like that and then he has them record them he, that's what he's already done he's already had them use audacity to record them i showed him this um plug called the stealth plugin it basically goes from your guitar right into um, a usb port yeah. on your computer so mm -hmm. if you're using GarageBand, it'll take your guitar um, uh, signal and, and put it right in a track in GarageBand. So I said, well, when you have them record it, instead of having them record it in Audacity, have them record it in GarageBand, but then they could use loops to right. kind of accompany um, this music that they've, uh, they've created. And they can also um, rearrange and they can do some things like you mentioned the word layering about adding um, texturally, you know, add, doubling things and, and building a texture up or dropping a texture down. And so some of the musical things we love to teach as, yeah. as, as composers, um, you can do with kids who barely read music, but as long as they can strum a few chords, 
uh, just using that one cable. So that would be an example of, of technology really unlocking some musical uh, possibilities. And that's the thing. You, you, you pick major musical concepts, layering, texture, uh, repetition, and how to use a program like GarageBand to teach those concepts. Yep. And I think that's what it is, is using the technology to teach music. Uh, we have a question from Nick. Uh, he says they have some smart music subscriptions at the school, yep. and he'd like, he's looking for more diverse things to do with technology. And he's wondering, would a parent night be a good idea to present some of the new technology that we'll be using? Going into my second year at the school, I'm trying to figure out how to get the parents to understand the wonderful things that students can do. Any ideas? Well, I do think that the performance aspect, like, so for instance, um, Nick, I'm not sure um, if you're a high school band director, middle school band director, elementary band director, but if you would incorporate um, some of that uh, technology use even if it's not in an apparent technology way, you can always explain it. So, for instance, say you have kids use NoteFlight to create a, um, a composition. Um, one of my uh, colleagues, uh, Rick Dammers, who teaches at uh, Rutgers in New Jersey here, um, but Rick uh, used to teach in, um, I think, St. Louis, uh, somewhere in the south and, uh, or Midwest, and, and he had, um, he had his, his entire band participate in a project where they wrote a march, a school march. And, and the whole project is described in my book because I think it's just such a wonderful thing. And he used Notepad, not Note Flight, but Notepad, the finale entry level uh, program on a bunch of laptops and, and kids coming to, to, instead of coming to lessons, they would come to the computer lab, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, it, it, definitely check out that lesson. But um, the project basically produced a march that the kids then played in their concert. So, how cool is that? That one of the repertoire that's uh, featured at a performance is a piece that the students collaboratively wrote. Yeah, that's terrific. Um, so if you have any way that um, you can sort of put those uh, things that you're doing with technology in the public, um, I don't know, you know, Parent Night maybe, maybe could be that. We do it. We, we have a thing here where we do a, a Festival of the Arts. Or we, mm -hmm. we have different kind of uh, evening events, and our, our school is really focused on community service. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, students are required to get service hours, and volunteerism is a really important aspect. If there's a way to tie that in, you know, have some kind of a common theme, right. uh, you know, uh, that might be a great way to do it and share it on a parent night. I think that's anytime you get the parents involved to see what your kids are yep. doing is a is a win win. And not just parents. I remember our school district, um, every um, every band director in our elementary school program and every strings director has a, uh, a, a music workstation, you know, a computer, um, a, a keyboard uh, for a controller, you know, a synthesizer, whatever, and uh, speakers and uh, there was a time where we didn't have that, and um, I, I basically brought that in my own my own little uh, the old Mac. Remember the lap, the um, Mac classics? Yeah, I wow. Would, I would bring my own Mac because I would use some sequenced accompaniments and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, so one time I had my kids um, in my elementary school, uh, maybe fifth sixth graders, uh, playing. Uh, for a school board appreciation night. So I brought this whole setup in to the school board meeting and had the kids, um, you know, maybe some, you know, select flutes, clarinets, whatever I had. Um, they did an arrangement. I, I, I created myself an arrangement of some tunes, and but they were being accompanied by the technology. And, and the school board members asked me about that technology, and one, our curriculum director was there at that meeting. It was the next year we got one of those for every teacher. Wow. Because they saw what it could do. You reminded me of something. Uh, we, we started using smart music last year. Uh, which is terrific. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love all the applications for it. But on back to school night, uh, I had it on and I had it projected on the screen and I was just in here playing my trumpet all night and my coworker was playing her saxophone. Parents walking by that weren't even parents of band students came in and were amazed by it. Uh, so they just, even demoing it yourself so that parents can see what's going on is, is pretty incredible. You know, we're really, <laughs> this I time told is, you, an hour is going to fly by. <laughs> we only have about five minutes left. And um, if we don't get to your question on Facebook, uh, Scott and I will stick around afterwards to answer them. And I'll type in the responses on here for you. Okay. And also, I want to remind everybody that's watching, if you've taken the time to come and uh, tune into this webcast, um, put yourself in the, the running for the giveaways, the two copies of um, Using Technology to Unlock Musical Creativity. You could win a free copy of the book if you just email me using the email link that's at the webcast. Just remember to give me your name and your mailing address, and we're going to pick two winners at random that will have Oxford University Press mail you a free copy. And then um, two other people uh, we're going to pick to receive um, a free composition um, or arrangement or whatever, one by Chris and one by myself. So again, you'll have to give us your name and your mailing address. Um, and um, when you email me for that latter uh, giveaway, I'll actually email you back and ask you which uh, piece do you want. You know, go on the Alfred website. Uh, you can listen to um, recordings of Chris's music, listen to some recordings of my music, and um, you know, just tell us what title you want, um, and uh, we'll mail it to you. Um, 
I want to also, uh, again, before we run out of time, just thank our sponsors. BandDirector.com is a fantastic website that I honestly have to admit I didn't know too much about until um, at last year's Midwest Band and Orchestra Clinic. I know they um, did a live webcast, um, just like you're viewing now, of the uh, Seika Girls High School uh, Band from Japan, and it was a real hit. A lot of people were aware of that webcast and um, and got to hear that excellent uh, ensemble because of BandDirector.com. So uh, thank them for hosting this um, webcast. Um, certainly Oxford University Press, um, the great support with the book, and um, just keep an eye on the Oxford University Press website because they're, um, you can tell they're trying to uh, introduce more titles, more music education titles. My book is one of them, um, but there's some other titles coming um, uh, in the future. Um, Alfred, I think, is a really special company. If I could mention for about Absolutely. Alfred. Absolutely, yeah. They're involved in amazing technology with their Sound Innovations Method Series, uh, where you can go online and change the curriculum to adapt right. to your school and situation. I'm lucky enough to be writing book three of the Sound Innovation series called Sound Development. You can check out the Sound Innovation series at www.alfred.com slash soundinnovations. Right. My school district, uh, Parkland School District, after a long review process, is, is actually switching to Sound Innovations it's, uh, this it's fall. It's really incredible. So uh, just the fact that they would have such a unique band method, that they have something like Alfred Records, that they have the Alfred Music Tech series, I think uh, as a publishing company, uh, they've got a lot of great stuff going on. Uh, time, the technology for music educators. Uh, nobody's doing more for K-12 uh, music educators, uh, I think, when it comes to providing uh, training um, uh, and smart integration of uh, technology into the music t uh, curriculum. So appreciate them for uh, spreading the word about this webcast. Um, if you don't know about Music Master Pro, it's an application that you can get for your iPhone or your um, iPad, and it's basically like a Swiss Army knife for band directors. It has... I haven't seen it. And it's cool. It has like a tuner. Um, a uh, metronome, an audio recorder, an editor, um, just a, I think a, a, a file library system for music. It has a lot of really cool things, but all in one application. So wow. uh, I want to give a shout out to them. And then uh, Joe Berkovitz at uh, noteflight.com um, for um, also spreading the word about this. Um, and, um, you know, there's a lot of other companies we've mentioned, uh, whether it's Finale or whether it's Amazing Slowdown. I mean, technology is so rich and there's so many great tools. Um, uh, and um, today we specifically have tried to center it on using technology in, in a band or instrumental music realm. But um, honestly, if you get used to some of these, um, these great uh, products, they, they make your life a lot easier and, uh, and uh, make your teaching a lot more focused and effective. Um, as we close today... Uh, I want to encourage you to be in touch with uh, Chris and I. We love hearing from folks who are performing our music, and you will find contact info on the banddirector.com uh, webcast page. You'll see there's a link for Chris's website, a link for my website. And um, if you're performing any of our music, we'd love to hear from you. Um, uh, we, we enjoy collaborating with directors, whether it's something like the Skype um, conferences or uh, commissions or guest conducting. And um, I just think it's so great to, to, have, to meet people on the other end. It's terrific. And it, it, please be encouraged to contact us with any questions. I, I think Scott is a perfect example of how teachers are willing to share. Uh, and we're just like everybody else out there. So hopefully this was an enjoyable interaction for you, and it's something that I would definitely like to do again at some point. So thanks for asking me to do this. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm glad it. to do it. Um, Chris, before we uh, sign off, do um, you want to just maybe share, uh, since you are, you're a composer, and, and, uh, and again, congratu congratulations on your, your involvement with Sound Innovations, too. Thank you. Um, uh, maybe a bestseller that Alfred uh, publishes of yours um, that you could tell us about? I have to say, aside from Through a Child's Eyes, which I'm looking forward to, all, I, it's hard because you love all of your pieces. Yeah, yeah. And not in an egotistic way, but because they're part of you, so you're connected to them in some Which, special way. Which, by the way, way, is addressed in the book. <laughs> Kids own their music, right? And, it is. It's yeah. an extension of yourself. Yeah. Uh, but I'd have to say Pony Express because it's my first one with them. So I, I kind of feel a special connection with that piece. And uh, I just think the first, I'll never forget when I actually got the professional recording, uh -huh. just how amazed that I was hearing. Right. Uh, it's an amazing experience. It is a thrill. So I'd have to say Pony Express is one of my personal favorites. Yeah, and your kids will have the same um, um, aha, you know, great feeling when they hear stuff that they've created uh, perform. Um, and so that's part of this, this process, too. Um, if I could mention, um, my bestseller with Alfred is actually a piece called Ghosts in the Graveyard, <laughs> which I wrote because uh, the kids in my elementary school used to do a Halloween game called Ghost in the Graveyard, and I really wrote it for, for my own students. But um, more recently, Tu Ungane, uh, which is an African um, uh, uh, traditional music. Um, it, it's part original, but part based on a, on a, a tune that a missionary friend of mine actually sh uh, sang to me. Uh, so Tu Ungane has done well, too. Um, so uh, anyway, Chris and I would love it if you'd uh, check out our music on our websites. 
And we thank you for joining us. And again, remember to email us if you want to be included um, in a chance to win uh, those giveaways. Thank you Thanks, very much. Chris, for uh, being Thanks. with me today. My and pleasure. thank you all for, for tuning in. And uh, uh, we just thank you and hope you'll check out the book. Thanks.